Hello. Oh, welcome. I'm Derpy Goose. I'm about ooh, 5,000 words into a new novel draft. And today I want to talk all about habits. More likely than not, finishing a novel draft is going to require more than willpower, motivation, or even that elusive vocation to do it. It's probably going to require habit formation. So as I move into the third week of drafting this manuscript, settling into the habit of writing most days, I thought it was a good time to talk about productivity and habit formation. Today's video is all about how to get yourself regularly writing. Now whilst habit formation is definitely relevant to reducing procrastination, as a serial procrastinator myself I do have a lot more thoughts on that topic than what I can cover today, so I guess maybe a procrastination specific video is in the future. But today I'll be focusing just on how to get yourself regularly sitting down and writing, or standing up and writing, holding a writing session in whatever format best suits you. We'll talk about how to make each writing session as productive as possible another time. And on that note, it also means today's discussion isn't super writing specific. I'll be drawing on things I learnt with forming study habits, work habits, even getting the chores done habits. Overall, the skills that underpin habit formation I find are pretty transferable. So first thing first, willpower. The ability to exert self-control in order to resist a temptation or complete a task, sacrificing immediate gratification and short-term pleasure in the pursuit of a longer-term goal. Sounds great. And when it comes to getting yourself to spend somewhere in the vicinity of hundreds of hours across multiple months working on a novel draft, willpower certainly sounds very needed. And it is, but maybe not in the way and to the degree we often attribute to it. Let me be blunt. Willpower is not that strong. Even if you feel you do have a strong willpower, it's not the strongest tool in your arsenal. And I'll be the first to admit, I didn't understand this. Not until relatively recently. You hear things about how willpower is finite, it's harder to resist temptation when you're tired. I knew these things, but I didn't understand what they meant. Growing up, and even through uni too, I viewed my lack of infinite willpower as a failing, and even knowing willpower was ultimately finite, still saw it as my responsibility to develop mine to be at the point where day in, day out, I can rely on it for all tasks and temptations and never fail. You know, a finite big enough to handle all my needs. Removing temptations felt like cheating. I'm supposed to have the willpower to say no and keep saying no day in and day out. But removing temptations isn't cheating. Because you can't cheat at living your day-to-day -day life. Removing temptations is the pinnacle of working smarter. What willpower is finite really means is if you are reliant on willpower and willpower alone, the exertion of self-control to resist a temptation and forego short-term pleasure, you are eventually going to fail. For example, if you're wanting to write for an hour every day, and every day you have to engage your conscious and persuade yourself to do this, maybe you will succeed for a few days, maybe a few weeks, but you will fail. Maybe the first week will go well, the second week, okay, you miss a few days, but overall it's okay. And then week three, you're in and out of crisis meetings all day at work, it's stressful, you get home and just want to lay on the couch doom scrolling, and you do. You've probably spent hours already that day and that week forcing yourself to do things you don't want to because your job requires it. Maybe using all your willpower to resist saying some of the things you'd really like to say in those crisis meetings. Your system of willpower is exerted and you will fail. 
And this was the cycle I went through for years. I'd make a commitment to myself, manage it for a week or two, fail, and then blame myself for being weak-willed and let that derail me completely. And even if you do manage to write every day, if you are engaging willpower each and every day to achieve that, you are likely sacrificing ad hoc tasks or succumbing to other temptations as a result of continuously using your willpower reserves on, in this case, writing. Basically, if you rely solely on willpower to resist temptations and make yourself do tasks with long-term benefits, you will not be able to do as much as you could if you also worked on removing the temptations from your environment and making the tasks part of your habits. Habit formation is all about working the task into your subconscious so as you are no longer exerting this finite source of energy in deciding whether or not to do it. It's just a habit. My morning routine before work is so habitual at this point that I can be halfway to the tram stop without having really even realized I'm awake. If I was arguing with myself to get up each morning, I would be exhausted before the day even began. Willpower is, however, still useful, but as a finite resource, it's best to direct it towards ad hoc occurrences or temptations that can't be foreseen, reduced, or planned around. Willpower is also extremely useful in the initial stages of habit formation, like holding a gingerbread house up while the icing dries. If you relied on holding the house up yourself, your arms are going to get sore, you are going to fail. But that doesn't mean those few minutes of holding the roofing panels in position aren't important. Keeping everything together while the bonds between gingerbread and icing form and harden. So, instead of focusing on improving your willpower, a task that in my own experience has exclusively led to just beating myself up for not having more willpower, instead let's focus on using our limited daily reserves to form strong habits that will then carry us the rest of the way to our aim, whether that be writing related or something else. So, how to form a habit? You know this, of course, you do something enough times it becomes habitual. Repetition, repetition, let's do it again. But there are some considerations that can help you here, help you in these early stages of doing that repeating. For the first roughly two weeks of forming this new habit, you are going to be engaging willpower, consciously controlling yourself to do this task, even if you kind of don't want to in the moment. So, to increase your chances of having sufficient power in reserve to say no to temptation and yes to focusing and doing the task, you are going to want to be prioritizing your willpower towards this new habit that is being formed. It may mean you succumb to a couple other temptations, so now might not be the best time to also be trying to form other new habits or break other bad habits. I think this is something that we often fall prey to, getting suddenly motivated to turn our lives around and wanting to tackle everything at once. We're going to exercise regularly, start that novel we always wanted to start, stop spending money frivolously. Wow, that's a hard word to say. Frivolous, no. Frivol, no. Frivol, frivol. To stop spending so much money, <laughs> cook our own meals and drink less alcohol. And we're going to start all of this right now, all at once. You are setting yourself up to fail. Remember, you overestimate what you can achieve in a week and underestimate what you can achieve in six months. So if you do have a number of things you want to tackle, write them down, commit to making these changes in the next six months and give yourself time to tackle them one by one, forming habits, removing the unwanted temptations from your life altogether, and handling each transition period in turn. As well as ensuring you aren't biting off more than you can chew with what you're using your willpower reserves for, I also find it really helpful to start with just the habit formation. That is, success isn't doing the task well, it's just doing the task. 
So for writing, that might mean sitting down and writing a couple hundred words. That's still a success. Like I said, I'm two weeks into my new novel manuscript and only 5,000 words in. That's not a lot. And there is some other reasons for why that number is so low, which I'll save for another video. But one of the reasons is because some days I've only sat down for maybe 20 minutes. But by still going through the motions, even if I haven't made that much progress that day, it's still reinforcing the habit formation. During the early stages of habit formation, when I'm engaging my willpower, if it's been a particularly rough day and I'm struggling to convince myself to do this, then I negotiate with myself. I'll sit down for 10 minutes and do 200 words, and then I can go nap like I so desperately want to do. But I make sure I'm still doing something, however little, until it gets to a point I'm sitting down and writing after work without even realizing. It's a habit. Another little hack I use to make these first few weeks easier is to pair the habit I'm trying to form with an easier to form habit. Writing can be intimidating. Making myself a cup of tea around the same time each day markedly less so. So by pairing making that cup of tea and then sitting down at my desk with my laptop and starting some writing, I link the two together so that each day instead of convincing myself to sit down and write, I'm instead convincing myself, okay, time to go get a cup of tea. And once I've got that process underway, well, I'm committed now. I better see it through and do the writing. In time, tea comes to mean writing. And it's all a very positive way of getting things started. It could be a coffee in your favorite mug, putting on a comfy pair of slippers, just something easy and nice that you like doing and can reserve to only do when you're going to start writing. That's the important one for me. This method doesn't work if I allow myself to not follow through with the actual writing. The two habits need to be linked and inseparable. Overall, I have had the most success with habit formation when it is part of a routine. So for example, sitting down in the same place, same time each day. I'm not the most routine following person in general. I've spoken before that I usually lean more towards the chaos embracing side of the spectrum than the structure loving side. But I think the reason why consistency helps with habit formation is because it means I'm not having to make any decisions about say, where to sit or when to do my writing session. And, and decision making engages the conscious. Well, we don't want that. For habit forming, we want there to be no option of questioning, do I really want to do this? And the conscious is great at doing that exact questioning. So what considerations are there for making the best choice in these regards to your routine? First, let's look at time. How often do you want to write? It doesn't have to be every day. I get up every Saturday and spend an hour or two cleaning my flat and doing the chores. It's a habit. I'm not forcing myself to do it each week, it's just what I do. Do I enjoy doing chores? No, I don't. That's why I made it a habit. But my point is, it's a once a week habit. And it's just as strong as any of my daily habits. So don't feel it needs to be daily or it's not possible to make it a habit. Rather, consistency, I think, is key. So if you are going to aim for, say, three writing sessions a week, I do find it helpful to have the days already designated because it reduces the risk of engaging your conscious in deciding each evening, is tonight one of the nights I'm going to write? Instead, you come home on a Monday and know, yes, I write on a Monday night. And if you have plans with friends that particular Monday night, you know it defaults to Tuesday. No conscious decisions to be made. As well as day, there's also time. And again, I would recommend having this already decided. Same time each day, or even maybe you do a different time on a Saturday. But each Saturday, you do it at that different time. When deciding times, you are going to want to take your schedule and preferences into account. Are you more productive in the morning or evening? Me? 
Evening, definitely evening, not a morning person. I've had times that commonly ad hoc tasks come up and you won't be free, or maybe you're more likely to have temptations. I see the sun setting outside in summer and always want to go for a walk to the beach. So it's not a good time around sunset for me to be writing as there's going to be an ongoing temptation. What about meal times? You don't want to be trying to write day after day when you're hungry. That's another temptation that will draw you away from writing. One tip I have for finding a consistent time that works for you is to remember your body doesn't actually know what time it is. You can take the approach of writing at 6.30 in the morning each day. If that works and is easy, maybe you always get up at that time. But you can also take a more relative approach. For example, myself, I like to write as soon as I get home from work. I make myself a cup of tea, I settle down at my desk, and I spend some time writing. I don't always finish work at the same time, and the commute time can vary vastly, especially depending on how many tram crashes there are, which has been a big problem of late, but anyway. But by having the timing be relational to other daily events, it has the same impact of knowing I'm supposed to be writing now. With that said, lives get busy, and especially if, say, you have young children, you may be in a situation where finding a consistent time to write each day is just not really going to be an option, and you need to rely more on other aspects of your routine to bring it consistency into the mix, such as location. Here I would think about reducing distractions and temptations and also ensuring you are comfortable, especially things like too hot or too cold. I find temperature discomfort really distracting. But I also live in an unconditioned flat in Australia, so I understand firsthand it's, it's not always controllable. I'm not big on the super aesthetic workplace stuff, but I know I don't work well with clutter. So I keep my workspace uncluttered, otherwise I will spend all my time fidgeting with the clutter. If you don't have a good idea what conditions you work best in, you soon will. And if you find something in your space is distracting, remove it. Something I did learn over COVID and working from home was the importance for me of the relationship between space and task and having different tasks in different locations. When I started working from home, it meant the space I had been using as my writing space became my working for a measly income space. I worked customer support at the time and found my desk quickly became associated with stress and aggression as strangers invaded my home throughout the day with their demands. Not pleasant, but it did teach me the importance of having separation between different aspects of life. So if you do work from home or also need a space for studying or some other task, especially one requiring a very different headspace to the more creative, imaginative thought processes writing requires, or maybe comes with strong negative emotions, you may want to explore options for separating these different aspects of your life into different physical spaces. For me, I would work at my desk because I needed a monitor and would just balance my laptop on my knees sitting cross-legged on my bed. So only like a meter away, but that's the space I was working with. And even that slight difference did help, allowing one space for more relaxed work and my desk to be the more stressy work. Interestingly, I never had an issue studying and writing in the same location. It was specifically work that just tainted a space with the remnants of stress. So no doubt your relationship with space will be different, but just a consideration that if you're finding it hard to shift out of a particular mindset and switch gears, try changing your environment. Don't have a good environment inside your home, maybe living in a noisy share house, or perhaps you just seem incapable of sitting down and working without ending up watching YouTube instead. Libraries, cafes, parks, whatever you have in your area, consider making it a habit to actually leave the house. I would especially recommend public library if you have one, free entry spaces, especially designed for studying, 
power points for charging, temperature controlled, and usually you need a membership and to actually log in in order to access the internet, which sometimes it's actually better to maybe not have the internet a single click away. Remember, the aim is to reduce the strain on your willpower and constantly forcing yourself to not just watch TikTok is a lot of mental exertion. So if getting distracted by internet access is an issue, turn off your Wi-Fi. Just remove the temptation or remove yourself to an environment without easy internet access. I've actually taken to going to the library every Saturday because I just really benefit from a couple hours a week to get a first draft of a script down or without access to the temptation of the internet. The first few weeks were an effort to convince myself it was worth getting up and getting a tram and going to the library. But now once my Saturday chores are done, I'm often out the door and en route without even really realizing. It's a habit. Plus, it leads nicely into then going out Saturday evening, kind of like I do the super concentrated period of internet free productivity, Saturday morning, early afternoon, and then have the evening off, which works well because balance, as always, is key to everything. <laughs> Ask an unreasonable amount of yourself and you will fail. You can use habit formation to make convincing yourself to do things easier by removing the conscious convincing but it does have its limits too. Personally, I pushed my own limits of productivity back in 2020 when I was working full-time, writing and critiquing, and oh, just casually completing my honors year and producing a 15,000 word thesis. This meant numerous days of eight hours of work followed by five or six hours of uni. It was a lot, but my max still wasn't working 100% of the time. I had limits. I had to take some evenings off. I had to give my brain time to just wind down and decompress. Oh, and when I did finish that thesis, I was really burnt out. It wasn't sustainable. Productivity still needs to be done in moderation. And I have always found more success when my routines have sufficient room in them to allow time for relaxing, socializing, getting out in the world, spontaneously going to the beach, or whatever other hobbies, interests, and downtimes you like. Success also requires resilience. Plan to write every day and miss a day? You need to view that as nothing more than, cool, missed a day, and get right back into it the next day. Allow yourself a margin of error where it's no big deal and doesn't mean you're falling off the wagon. Whilst I try to be consistent with what I sit down to write, some days it won't be feasible to write at a specific time. And some days I'm just straight up gonna be sick and in bed and productivity is out of the question. So if I'm too rigid with my expectations, it can be really derailing. Rather, I tend to use that consistency initially to form the habit and maintain a high level of consistency in order to keep it. But one day here and there at a different time or missed altogether won't derail things unless you let it. Give yourself a margin of error and remember balance is important in all aspects of life. All right, that was a lot to cover, a lot to think about, I hope. Perhaps most of all, remember you want to make success as easy as possible for yourself and forming strong habits that at least make the getting words on a page part of the writing process easy can go a long way to getting that first draft finished and one step closer to finishing your masterpiece. All right, that's it from me. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and see you again soon. Bye.